so freaking bad. WrestleMania. Welcome back, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling, episode 252, Death Becomes a with us this week we got a very special guest as i told you before as you might have heard and seen last week we're doing this thing this little expose if you will a little series um in october we helped uh, promote a little thing called the xpw theater of brutality for two two nights in gary scary gary indiana and my oh my what a couple of fucking nights they were so I wanted to get everybody that, uh, I mean, even without having those shows, I wanted to have everybody on this fucking show and kind of chop it up about their experience there and beyond. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the motherfucking godmother of the death match, Mickey Knuckles. Mickey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> it's like night and day. <laughs> I love it. Great. Great. How are you? Good. I'm doing really good, girl. You know, I'm finally, you know, I've been looking uh, to cut this episode with you for a long time. Uh, I know we ran into some hurdles before, but hey, that's life. You're a parent. I'm a fucking parent. I get it. Fucking kids. We got kids. But uh, I'm saying better. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to see Mama Mickey come out during this interview. <laughs> laughing me every time i'm like look if you don't quit i'm gonna wall up your booty and they're like laughing I'm like why are you laughing at me i got grown men scared of me like yeah but that's grown men that ain't us yeah. ain't gonna hit i'm like my oh. three-year-old i'll tell him i was like man if you don't stop i'm gonna whoop your ass he's like no you ain't gonna whoop my ass <laughs> i'm like dude you can't be saying that shit he says now you're going with his mama yep oh man he says all kinds of crazy shit but he's a cute kid so he gets away with it um it is. let's just dive in real quick you were right. a part of both nights in Gary, Indiana, and I can't thank you enough. I can't thank everybody enough because that was like a dream come true to put a situation like that together. And thankfully, you know, Ron made it happen. I always wanted to do, uh, you know, like a, a wrestling metal show, but it makes more sense for me being a part of like the death metal, like underground, you know, to have like death match wrestling. Cause I feel like they go hand in hand, you know, they're both like kind of somewhat counterculture, you know, off the beaten path. A lot of people may not fucking like, like it or have a taste, but those that do are very fucking passionate about it. So to be able to put on, you know, not just one, but two shows for a fucking weekend and it, Man, all you guys are so fucking cool. You know, I got to tell you right out the gate, too. I'm sorry I drank a lot of your beer. Fucking Masada just kept handing them to me. I, I was like, man, I think he's going to fuck me up. That's why I brought him. I knew Masada and Necro would need beer. I'm Aunt, I'm Aunt Mickey for a reason. Hell, yeah. But uh, let's let's just start off with uh, Friday night, night one. Um, I mean, what, what were your thoughts on the whole situation and uh, your match that night? That was uh, the first night. Let me uh, come on rewind back here and uh that was that wasn't the fucking the, the second i was a godfather first night oh satu jin that was fucking jesus fucking christ and i just gotta say this and then shout out to bull bronson too because he was like he he said the same thing he's like dude the atmosphere i mean it wasn't like hundreds of people by no means but i didn't think it it didn't really need that you know it had the vibe of the show where it was at and everything just had this fucking feel, this like fight club feel, this dingy, dirty, fucking intimate fucking setting. And you, <laughs> I love the story you guys told. I Go went ahead. outside before the show, like at, when the doors open, I went outside fully in gimmick, which, you know, I'm pretty much butthole naked. And so I'm outside in Gary, Indiana on the side of the walk with my whole butthole hanging out, my little fur jacket. Like that's going to keep me warm from anything up there. And, and, you know, both cheeks are just out for display and people passing by and I'm like, what's up? Hello, everybody. And then I realized like, some people were stopping and slowing down and rolling by. And I was like, so I'm going to get kidnapped. I, I better shut up. They'll find a way to drug me. Right. I know they will. <laughs> get in the van. Uh, it's just a whole different environment. It was more of like the backyard garage style. You know, like you said, the grunge, the death rock, very garage where everybody's close like together. Like a grind there. house feel, you know? Where everybody's on top of you. So you, there really is no room for 
you know, calling spots and then there's no rain. So then you've got just the elements to work with. You've got your ground, you've got your stage. We found a beer keg thingy outside that Ron told me to throw in. We're going to go over it because he, he almost got me killed by Masada. Ron told me to throw it in. I threw it in. I didn't know Masada was going to back up into it and trip over <laughs> it. That was not my fault. I cut I that out of the video. Comes at us. You're stepping here. You're, 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 you're taking that hit. I'm not taking that hit. Not today. Anyways. But no, it was a fun time. Everybody had a great time. Uh, a lot of smoke, a lot of laughs, a lot of beer, a lot of alcohol. My liver thanked me for that for a break. I was like, ah, I just need a break for a sec. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's uh, so it's. I mean, obviously, you're known for the death match shit, but you've been around here. I mean, you've worked with Mikey and Black Label, right? You've done some shit with them, but they're not doing no yeah, fucking was- death match <laughs> stuff, right? I mean, unless they're. It What's that? Me and, Big, me and Big Beef were going to be a tag match before for them. And yeah. I don't know what happened. It just kind of fell through when COVID hit, I guess. But Yeah. But, and I know Mike is a huge fan of fucking you and your work. Um, so shout out to those guys because, you know, I mean, fuck, I wouldn't want necessarily, this is something I'd like to do maybe once a year, you know, have everybody come together and fucking do that because, you know, they have some brutal ass yeah, fucking. What's that? That any more than that might be too stressful. <laughs> yeah, it's I can. They get tedious and stressful where you're just like, why am I doing this right now? I have yeah, oh, yeah. I have to be responsible for it. I can go do. Yeah. And yeah, and we ran into some problems. Um, like right now, everybody can go jpdub.com. That's uh, two playlists from both nights uh, filmed in 4K. Yeah, I did film it on my motherfucking phone, but I got some great fucking angles and some great shit that, hey, most of these other people wouldn't have been able to get because they don't know how to get those fucking shots, those up close and personal and those little comedy bits. I love the owner of the place was freak losing his shit the whole night. He's like, not my fucking chairs. <laughs> you can't be out here. And I was like, okay, I'll be back later. I was like, I'll keep hanging out here. I was just hanging out with my, my butt out, but that's cool. And then I came back out to wrestle later. And that was against that dude. And he's like, Never mind, you crazy. You, but you know, maybe you should stay over here. But you crazy. I was like, all right. And after your match too. Oh fuck. Uh, cause see, this dude Daryl that runs it. I mean, he's a comedian too, and he had some of his comedian buddies up there. Uh, and this one dude was like, it's this black dude. He had like a whole pimped out white fucking gimmick on. Like he he was just <laughs> never no. seen. Never seen no shit like that before. And I used that sample. I took the audio from it. I was like, I ain't never seen no shit like this before. Like, he was so into it after your match. He's like, you, man, girl, you deserve it. You fucking all that thing. He's like, I'm here for the violence. Like, he was losing his shit. It's all on camera. So everybody, please go watch. I got full matches, everything, music. Watch this shit. Share it. You know, it was fucking There's great a of, night. A lot of just candid moments that everybody had. Like, yeah. Yeah was watch worthy it was all something different i don't know it's just an eclectic environment everybody was different everybody was unique um we all told our own little stories that kind of interweaved anyways i don't know every, and everybody had fun you can tell the boys were having fun that's when the crowd has the most fun yeah you know we put everything into it well the more fun we had with it so oh yeah and there wasn't a person like i said in the house like those motherfuckers daryl and them comedian dudes it made it hurt of wrestling, you know, you know, like WWE. I think one of the guys I was talking to earlier, and he actually like went back deep, and he's like, "Yeah, man, talk about the Von Erickson shit," which I was like, "Dude, fuck yeah, for real, like let's go." And they were enjoying it. You could tell that, like, Daryl was well, so pissed because he's. Go ahead. I tell people all the time because I get these, I get people who hate all the time on the internet, uh, on my sites like the Instagram and shit when people post reels, and I'll just accept the at the ad request and the next thing you know i get this isn't wrestling okay. why are you here <laughs> why do you why do you have to just go and do something negative why are you here obviously this isn't for you this right. isn't your right i'm not your cup of tea but i'm somebody yeah. else's shot of whiskey that's yeah. not my fault calm down i'm not here to offend you just chillax they're like well that's not what i mean i just mean cornet and i'm like oh please blow it off like seriously uh-huh. Cornet can suck my dick. Yeah. And I'm yeah. no problem with learning, but and the thing is, he's fucking working the gimmick so hard. Like, if you actually think that he is like being real about 90% of the shit he's saying, 
He's just trying to fucking work you motherfuckers because he gets attention from it. He's a carny, you know, who fucking cares? He's doing this fucking job still to this day, working everybody, you know? And even if he's not, even if I'm fucking lying to you, it doesn't matter because especially nowadays, like you said, it may not be someone's cup of tea, but it's your shot of whiskey or maybe someone's fucking shot of vodka or moonshine or whatever. There are 5,000 million hundred umpteenth different promotions now that you have access to watch. So I'm pretty sure there's like from A to Z style of fucking whatever you call pro wrestling that you don't even have to waste a breath or moment or second of your time to bitch about it. That's what I don't get. That's redundant. Why, why spend so much energy? Why put that energy out in the world? Yeah, yeah. Like well, you're, that's the you're problem with the whole world, you know? I'm so miserable that you have to perpetuate your misery onto other people. Just calm down. I've been yeah. around people. They're like emotional vampires. They just yeah. suck life out of things because that's what they like to do. They love to suck the life out of things. If they would yeah. just suck as much as they suck the life out of things, I'm sure they'd be better off. They probably suck a hell of good dick if they suck that well, you know. <laughs> uh, which is them doing. I've been I've been commended on mine. So but anyway. going back to what I'm saying though, it, it was so cool to see guys like that, like really enjoy and like holy fuck, like it was special to them, you know, everybody that was there both nights, like it. I, I'm glad that I'm not alone and feeling like, man, this felt really cool. This was really unique. Like if, if done right and thought about well, because like, here's the thing, this was all done. Like realistically kind of like fly by the seat of our fucking pants type shit. So to put on something that fucking cool and different with. well, when you, And it also goes back to everybody wants to blame certain people for certain things like the streaming issue of it, but being on the other side of it, cause I got there early enough just to see what I could do to help out. Because everybody's generally cool to me, so why not be cool to them? And, you know, when you're told the building's got this great Wi-Fi and stuff, and you get there and you're running all these other things, you got a million things on your plate, you're assuming that they're being kind of honest with you, and yeah. you're worried about that because you're trying to get everything set up so you can get that get to that point. And yeah. People are like, oh, we should have tested earlier. Yeah, well, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but now you can watch it if you want. I'm yeah. um, sorry. He tried to do something where it was on the uh, – uh, subscription or whatever it was and, and some people got it and we ran into problems with obs like that's that's the yeah. thing like it wasn't even the internet it's like it's technical difficulties this uh you know technology is gay and whatever you know cancel me now it's a fucking yeah. song but you know what i mean people run in these problems and then everybody wants to fucking bitch about it it's like dude that that was heartbreaking you know especially to me because i'm like telling bands like hey man come do this show like let you sell merch i ain't gonna fucking pay you but you'll have this opportunity for a whole different audience to see your shit that i think hey man most people that like deathmatch love the type of music that we do i didn't see anybody bitching about the time or nothing everybody has seen that everybody was vibing the artists and the wrestlers were kind of just yelling together and talking like what was it masada was talking to somebody about philosophy or something i don't know i'm not sure i i I hear big words and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm, I'm just gonna chill over here. I'm yeah, right. uh, it seems like it's gonna be bringing a lot of emotion out, and I don't want no part of it at all. So, and, and you know, here's, the, here's the other thing that I got to give props to for that show because, like, in, in the Ron, I mean, Ron booked the fucking wrestling talent. You know, like he gave me so many fucking flowers and respect for helping them out and just doing the shit. But it's like, dude, he's the real fucking dude that he booked you guys you know and for anybody that missed out you missed out on masada mickey knuckles and fucking necro and all in the same space at one fucking time in northwest indiana what the fuck you know it was a fun time i mean anytime you get with necro and masada it's always going to be something to write home about yeah. <laughs> probably not something you should say in front of your parole officer but definitely something to write home about. for sure and Masada's fucking awesome. Like that dude, he's so like just he's fucking real. So Yeah. And that ne- Necro, like, you know, as a as a fan, you know, watching these dudes growing up and shit, like, and they actually be there and be a part of something, it was really cool. And then to be a fly on the wall or in the backstage while they're having like some cool ass fucking conversations and shit. And then did you stay you stayed at my buddy Stone's house, right? Mm-mm. I went over and hung out for a little while, but no, nah, my sister and them were with me, so we went to a room. 
Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. And they were cool as fuck, too. Uh, your sister, I think she followed me on fucking Facebook and shit. Like, really cool, yeah, man. Yeah, Crash family. You, yeah. get, you get drunk, they're ready to fight, especially the little one. She wasn't with us this time. Unfortunately, she had to work. Her name is Tato, and she's the one that tried to beat up Sadika. So, you know, oh, my trash family. I love them to death, though. It's, it's awesome. You got the promoter going, you all need to calm down. I was like, this is so great. I love it. <laughs> so don't <laughs> about anything ever, yeah. ever. And they're like, you should have told us. I'm like, no, no, we're good. I'm like, yeah, shit happens. It's okay. Yeah, for real. But and, and that's another thing too. Uh I gotta shout out my buddy Stone every one of these episodes because I mean without him, dude, I mean he gave you know basically an Airbnb to motherfuckers. He does it for bands and shit. I'm like, look, dude, I'm putting the show on. If you could help these people out, like that would be killer, you know? Like so giving people a place to crash and party. He's told me he was up with Masada till like six in the morning in the garage, like yep. just talking about music, you know, like I'm like, fuck, I had to come back home. You know, I got a fucking a wife and kid at home, you know, like, but I, I would have loved to have been there and been a part of that conversation till, you know, to the break of dawn. Yeah, I think we left right before they went to the garage. Like we left around four and they were had to <laughs> much about music. And we okay. actually had my, my niece got sick because she had, she had indulged. People kept buying her sh shots and stuff because it's a bar. Yeah. She's a cute little girl. So, you know, yeah, I'm like, whatever. But yeah, they get by her. She was, she was pretty foobard. I was like, okay, I'm good to drive. I'm on a little high. I, I can do this. So we get to the Airbnb and she's just like, I got to sit in the car for a second. And she came in there for half a second. I think I've got really too dizzy and she came back out and threw up everywhere. Oh. So we, we didn't even think to look for her until about, we're such terrible people. An hour later. An yeah. hour later, I was like, where's she at? She's been gone for a while. It's cold so I got, outside. I walked outside. And I was like, somebody must be kidnapped her or something. I'm a terrible aunt. I'm sorry. I, that's oh, why I'm not your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so going into night two, you have this fucking uh, Jesse Daniels. He's calling himself the Godfather. <laughs> He's supposed to be a greasy Dago wop, you know, in a non condescending type of way. It's, it's comedy, people. Um, uh -huh. That, I mean, that was just as, like, you cut the promo. The promo was also available on YouTube, uh, you guys, back and forth. And it was, I mean, holy shit. Like, it was just an environment where you, if you like extreme dark, black humor, violence, all that shit. Like I said, like a grindhouse fucking deal. Like, it was there, and you guys fucking tore it up. And I got to know, because, I mean, like I seen in the video and in person, when you took, you brought those pumpkins, right? What the fuck was in those? Were those skewers in those pumpkins? Who brought those? Um, some some fans, they were like, we brought these things, but nobody wants us to, or nobody, they said we can't bring them in. I was like, well, I can bring anything oh. in. I was like, here. So they gave them here. And I was like, they're like, bet. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got you. So I went over and took it and put it on the stage. Nice. So like, and the next thing I found out is somebody's like, why did you let them, or who brought those pumpkins in? I was like, I did. And they just looked at me. They're like, never mind. They walked away. Yeah. And apparently, one, one of the one person didn't want the skewer, the pumpkins with the, not the skewers, but the one thing in it. I was like, I'll take it. I don't care. They're like, no, it'll be okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's a pumpkin. <laughs> that thing looked like it fucking hurt. I mean, I seen it pulling skin from your inner fucking thigh when they're mo oh, removing they're it. The little What's ones that? don't, the little ones don't explode like the bigger ones do. The little ones, yeah. It's more like a tonk whenever it hits you. Was that? Was that the fucking, what was the worst bump of uh, both nights for you? If any. No. Nothing too terrible. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought that was what was great. Like to the audience, I mean, yeah, you're still hurting yourself. But I mean, what professionalism across the board. Like every, all you fucking guys killed it. Like in that aspect, you know, like, holy shit. Just get fucking it. That looked brutal as fuck, <laughs> whatever. But they're just like, all right, that's cool, you know. But you, you, and you guys did it as safe as you can do it, I you know. I do all kinds of stupid shit regularly and take it. That's just how it is. I'm just, I mean, you, uh, after night one, you went and wrestled what, uh, in Lafayette the next day yeah. on Saturday. So you wrestled twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
One time, at one point in time, uh, I was traveling around with a guy named Tracy Swathers. And, um, oh, man. I met yeah. Tracy when I was in fucking high school. And God damn. God man. rest his soul. He fucking, he was a thug. And I was traveling around with him a lot. And uh, at one point in time, he had us do a quad shot in one day. I was like, Tracy, there's no way we're going to do this quad shot. He's like, oh, yeah, I got it all planned out. Make no, we're going to go do he, A, B, C, and D. I was like, all right, we made all of them. We were on the main event of the last show, thankfully, and it went kind of late anyway. So, yeah. all right. But we went from Kentucky to Tennessee and back to Kentucky. I was like, okay. Are you, you in, you're in Kentucky now, right? I live, I live near Indiana, like Kentucky, Indiana. But you're a born a Hoosier, though, right? Yeah. Well, whatever. Come on, talk some shit, girl. Bring it on home. Ultimate Warrior, Mick Foley. Fuck, there's there's so many like legends, you know. Well, they don't. Michael play Jackson. Me. Oh, they probably do play me. No, but anyways, but no, they don't play me. Um, no, no. I've, I've kind of just always been all over. Well, you you speak of Tracy Smothers and shit. Like, I mean. You've been doing the fucking independence and just wrestling it for what over twenty years now, about twenty years. I mean, other than Tracy, who were some of like maybe even not just legends in everybody's eyes, but in your eyes that like you got to kind of mentor you and fucking at least kick you with or party with? Ricky Morton. Oh hell, was- how is he? Is he rock and roll? Is he really rock and roll? So oh, cool. I love him. He's such a sweet man too. No, I love Ricky to death. Chris Candido was really awesome. Oh, sweet fuck, uh, Candido was great. I, I remember we had to sleep in a hotel room on the floors, and Candido's like, well, you all can come in here, but he had to sleep in the bed next to a picture of Tammy so nobody could sleep in the bed, which is fine. So I was sleeping on the floor, and he gave me the pillow off his bed with, and, you know, so I could have a pillow and then part of his sandwich to eat because I hadn't had anything to eat that day. Yeah. He's the sweetest guy. Um. Todd Morton, Michael Todd Stratton. He was an old South guy. Uh, worked the um, Bill Dundee. Oh, shit. Him and his son, Jamie Dundee, both hit on me at the same show. Wasn't he uh, in, what, that PG-13 group or something back in the day, WWE? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I, was, I was managing Tracy at the time. It's Isabel Smothers. And I was wearing my Daisy Jukes with my fishnets because we were heels. Mm. And Jamie Dundee and his dad made it known that they really liked Daisy Dukes with fishnets. Yeah. And asked if I'd ever been tag teamed by a father-son duo. I was Holy like, shit. no, I'm going <laughs> to walk over here to where Tracy is. I was like, uh, Tracy, he's like, y'all need to stop it. Like, Calm down. Man. And we whooped your ass. <laughs> was, um, bull pain. Didn't he have a hand in training you too? Chris Hero too as well? Mm-hmm. Chris Hero, Punk would whenever he was down. So that would be kind of fun. And then Ian would bring in uh, people like Samoa Joe and them. Yeah. Have seminars. we get to do those seminars with them. The one with Homicide and Beachway, that was fun. It's pretty interesting. They did something called Dragon Push-Ups where you jump up, go down, and then you have to push down and then like curl yourself up, go back up to the four pose, and then walk backwards and stand back up. And uh, and I was determined I was going to keep up with them. Oh. I mean, I'm a, I know I'm a fat broad, but I was determined. And they were I just read, so happy and impressed that I, I got to be friends with them. So I was like, yes. Fuck yeah. I, I, I read uh, somewhere um, Tracy Brooks made a comment about you saying she had never seen you know, like a woman trained that hard, like, you know, like you were fucking in there she fucking would, doing it. Cause like, even after I debuted, I still had to train. And so she would, she would get there early and I'd be setting up the ring and then we'd have to have training after we set up. So then I would train after I set up. And then I would, after I get done with that, I have to go set up gimmicks and concession. Yeah. And then if I was working in security or if I was wrestling or if I was wrapping, whatever I was doing. I had to do that plus run gimmicks throughout the show and concessions wherever it was needed. Um, and then take down the ring, put everything up and drive the truck to the next area because nobody else knew how to drive the, the ring truck. So I would drive the truck to the next area. And sometimes I would go days without sleeping. Oh, like, you 
sleep, and I'm like, no, not at all. It got bad enough to where sometimes I would see shadow people. You know how when you're driving, you think you see somebody, and it freaks you the hell out because you think you're getting ready to hit somebody, but you can't move, you're freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. I was, oh, I need to pull over at this stop and, and sleep for about 45 minutes. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. so what do you think uh you hear chris hero is uh back in action or just return to the ring at some in the event Did you catch any of that uh no i don't i work three jobs and i like to watch wrestling but when i work three jobs and then take care of my kiddos and stuff yeah. while i'm doing that I don't yeah. get a lot of time. and so like i feel bad because i really like watching wrestling and then people are like, did you see it on? And I'm like, no, it's on my list of things to do. I don't watch TV shows. I don't right. do anything. I just work and take care of my kids. And Hell yeah. yeah Living just, the life. It's called being busy. What was like the last, uh, I guess, like era of anything or whatever wrestling that you're really able to fucking pay attention to, I guess, you know, that really was can't miss for you? Oh, like can't miss? Yeah, and this might be going back to when you were young, you know. I mean, I'm just saying overall. The Attitude Era. I yeah. always loved the Attitude Era. And then the Attitude Era came about when ECW and, and all that. So, like, you got it. You had a little bit here, but then on that level, it was like a whole darker side of, oh, I can't watch this with anybody, my mom looking or nothing because she's going to flip the fuck out. I'm on the wrestling anyway, so I can only imagine. Right. I'm not even allowed to watch the Three Stooges because they're violent. Come on. <laughs> Really, like, yeah. She's like wrestling <laughs> stupid, and I was like, "But we only got one." When I was a kid, um, I didn't get to watch TV a lot. Throughout the week, we had a whole bunch of chores. My mom was a single mom, yeah. um, so and she worked on the ambulance, so she worked doubles, and we'd be at home by ourselves, taking care of ourselves. And I always had to do all the outdoor chores because I was the tomboy of the group. And uh, we would get one TV if we did all of our chores and was good for the week. We would get one TV show on the weekends, and I always chose Saturday morning uh, wrestling. None. With like Bobby Heenan and fucking Gorilla and shit, Mean Gene, holy yeah, shit, good. that was fucking oh, some of the best times of my life watching that shit. Of course, my mom hated it, but you know, that's why it's funny. Tracy tells everybody the story, and okay, so before he passed, we we had another travel together through West mm. Virginia, and we're driving, and he's like, Tracy's one of those people. He was great on road trips because he would talk your ear off, nonstop, yeah. even if he stopped because he took like a second to sleep. Like he fell asleep while I was talking. When he woke up, he's right back to where he was. He never misses a beat, right? So we're going to West Virginia. It's just me and him, and I'm driving. Um, and he's sitting in the passenger seat. And he's like, Mickey Knuckles, you never talk about your family. I'm like, all right, Tracy, what do you want to know? He said, uh, tell me about your, your mama. I said, my mama got sick and died when I was real young. And I went to, you know, I went to live with my dad. She, he's like, well, tell me about your dad. So he's a piece of shit, and I hope he gets a venereal disease and his dick falls off and he dies. Terrible. What's your dad like? <laughs> yeah. And then Tracy's like, okay, back to your mom. He starts asking you all kinds of questions about my mom and where she lived and this, that, the other. And he's like, you got a picture of her? I'm like, sure. So I pull up my sister's Facebook page and show him a picture on her Facebook page. Mm. And he looks at it for half a second, and he gives me back the phone, and he's quiet for 20 minutes, which is not like Tracy unless he's asleep. And I keep checking on it, but he's just staring out the window. Yeah. And I'm starting to freak out, thinking maybe he's had a stroke or something. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't say anything because I don't know yeah. what's going on. And I don't know where he goes. Mickey Knuckles, it was June 1989. The Steiner Brothers are down the street at the KFC buffet tearing it up. Your mom was in the in the back bedroom with the – her mom's friend was in the back bedroom with some one of the uh, other wrestlers getting it on. And me and your mom were watching a movie together. I said, no, Tracy. No, my mama didn't like wrestling. No. He's like, Mickey Douglas, I remember it. Like, it's 1989. Steiner Brothers, down the street, KFC buffet. Your mom's friend in the back room getting on somebody else. Me and your mom watching a scary movie. And I got up to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, God, okay. He goes, as I was walking back, your mom got up and grabbed me by the hook of the arm and took me to the bathroom. Now, at this point in the story, I'm thinking, maybe, <laughs> maybe Tracy will pump the brakes a little bit. He was trying to pump them brakes, you know? Yeah. Mom's been dead since I was 13. So there's no way I can I can ask my mother this question. Yeah. And 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 no, because my mom was pregnant with my older or my younger sister in 1989, June of 1989. I was actually okay. gave her birth to her in June 6th of 1989. 
So I don't really think she would have popped her twat right back out there. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm trying to argue with Tracy, and Tracy's just straight up, no, Mickey Knuckles, I'm telling you, boom, 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 repeats it all. He goes, Mickey Knuckles, your mom went down on me. I'm like, Tracy, oh. I'm telling you, <laughs> no, my mom did not give you a blowjob in June of 1989. He's like, I don't He's know. He's got exact dates. Did, did the he motherfucker goes, know the time too, Mickey? Probably, who knew? Anyways, he goes, then she took me in the back bedroom. Mickey and I was the best 30 seconds of my life. I was almost your stepdaddy for real. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> no, Tracy, he had, he had concocted this whole story to somehow like connect us through like an illegitimate way of me possibly being his kid for us to like to spin out into the world. And I'm like, no, Tracy, my mom wasn't a rat. My mom hated wrestling. My mom hated people like you. Like, let's just be honest. <laughs> and, and I don't think that would have worked out. And oh. so he calls Bull Payne. Now, Bull Payne at the time is sleeping with my mother in law. Mm. My ex mother in law. Sorry. Was that the dude he you were on? Because uh, I want to get into this to uh, finish this story, but uh, this whole fucking Springer shit. Was it that dude? No. Yeah. Okay. No. No. That. That was proceed. That was, Don't get into that right now. I'm sorry. I, don't let me detract anyway, you. I know. So now he called Bull Payne. He's he, Bull's, he's telling Bull all this, and Bull's cacking up, laughing. He's like, "Well, I'm sleeping with their mother-in-law right now." So for like years, it was a joke because for JCW, we had done a three, like a love triangle between Isabel Smothers, her dad Tracy Smothers, and Bull Payne, who was like Tracy's best friend. So when Tracy took some time off because he was he wasn't feeling well. They connected me and Bull as having a thing behind Tracy's back and and did this whole thing with that. But yeah, good times. I miss him. <laughs> Tracy was <laughs> fucking one of a kind. Like I said, I was in high school. Shout out to my boy Ed and this dude we know. Um, I fuck sophomores, maybe juniors. And Tracy was at a local fucking wrestling gig. I don't even know what it was, you know? But definitely wasn't no promotion. Uh, Anyways, we're there. We're getting fucking high. And we're with, with my buddy's like aunt. And it's like we stink, you know, back then when they called it hydroponics, you know, all that stuff, mm-hmm. like the the term for good weed. Uh, yeah. And we go back in and we're fucking sitting next to his aunt and shit. Like, oh, man, we fucking reek like weed. Like, I don't want to get caught. And then fucking me and Tracy like outside and shit. And, oh, you know, young kids talk to him for a couple minutes. That's it. But that's mm-hmm. still on you because I was a huge fan since like. Way back in the day, you know, I, I was watching, and I'm 41, I was watching, uh, obviously WWF got me into it, but like in the late 80s, early 90s, the NWA, WCW, and all that shit, like I love that Southern wrestling shit, even like 92 um, WCW Saturday night, and so then, and but I was also on board with like ECW, you know, like I was, WWE, WWF got me into the game, but Hey, when it was bad, I didn't watch it. I was thankful that those other two promotions were around, you know, like, and it spawned so much that we have now because it would have been horrible if WWE ruled the roost for more than 40 years. You know, they have 20 where they were the only game in town, you know, like. I'm just so glad. Good for anything. It's good for the boys. It's good for the companies. It's best for the fans. Competition's great. Exactly. You saw fucking Nick Gage on AEW. A better show, perfect. So it's a fucking exactly what you said is the bottom line in my eyes. You know, because what are you there for other than the passion, the drive, and all that? The love of professional wrestling. But you're there for a fucking payday. And you're the way you guys fucking whether it's deathmatch or just regular ass fucking wrestling. Everybody puts their fucking lives on the line every night. You know, like it's it's fucking insane. So the more places you guys can go. And apply your fucking trade and make that fucking almighty dollar. Those greenbacks. Yeah. I'm all for that shit. You know? Yeah. I mean, we're not young forever. No. no. Like our bodies are Only Rod right Stewart's here. forever young, you know? And forever hung, too, probably. I don't know. Man, I can imagine. My mom wanted to bang Rod Stewart. Actually, she was huge into Prince and uh, Sam Elliott. For some reason, those were her two guys that, like, she would she talk dirty about, like, to her friends. She didn't know we heard her. Cool. Like, I don't know what it is about Prince and Sam Elliott, but my mom wanted my mom and my mama wanted that train. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Sam Elliott got a lot of women wet, you know, and he probably still does to it's this day. It's the voice, I think. I it think is the, the voice movie. because it's just like, hey, I and wish. He's got the cool silver, like the silver He's fox a silver like fox, too. you know, and he's talking about Tombstone, one of my favorite movies of all time, you know. Right. One of Great Wyatt Earp's brother. <laughs> I got two guns, one full to each of you. <laughs> you so <laughs> drunk, you probably seen double right now, Doc. <laughs> That's so many great lines. You ain't no Daisy. Um, I want to kind of dive into that, uh, like I alluded to a couple of minutes ago, though, that uh, like years ago, I remember seeing something with you on Jerry Springer. I never saw the actual episode when it aired live, but give us a little context and background on that, because if people come across that like I did, it's just it's like, what the what the fuck is this? And is it a work? I can't legally say it's a work. Jerry's dead, you know. I, I I don't mean that in any bad way, but come on, no one's gonna sue you. You never know. Anyway, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, no, so Drake Younger called us up, and uh, he was like, "I got to hook in with this girl for Springer. They want some people to do some storylines." We're thinking like Drake and them split up and was gonna do a thing, and then it was me, Scotty Boy, Vortex, and OMG. I was like, mm. cool. They were like, well, what can we do? And OMG's really in the military. And I was like, well, what about I'm mad because he's in the military, so I cheated on him. And they're like, okay, let's do it. And then the thing is, is OMG had a her- hernia, like a herniated bulge right there. Oh. And so during the fight scene, Scotty and OMG's throwing punches, and they're like, yeah, we're really going to lay him in to make him look good, you know, whatever. And they start throwing punches, and Scotty accidentally uppercuts OMG right in that hernia, and he walks off stage. And it, it's a split second, but it's so brilliant. Scotty goes, uh, look at that. He's leaving you like he always does. He was going to the back to throw up because he hit him so hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, that's, 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 that's what that was. It was uh, they, they reimbursed me for the day's wage loss and um and gave us coupon or a uh, gift certificates or whatever to hard rock cafe and then put us up in a really nice ass hotel and yeah what was jerry like i didn't get to meet him really it was, it, they kept him separate we didn't get to meet him until we were out there so it was really weird but it's I like, crazy right, i mean fair enough. But here's like, the thing. So here's the kicker. Yeah, yeah. Not everything on there is a work. So no, I, I know you, there's some of it. If you but... go on there saying that you're related in any way, you have to prove your relation. So people who go on there is like kissing cousins. Like when we were there, there was three cousins, two females and a male there. And they were in a love triangle with each other. Yeah. And I thought that it was a work. They, 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 Apparently, it, it's not in their world. And um, when we were in the back getting ready, we were talking about certain things. And she's like, so what are you here for? And I tell him, she's like, oh, I'm just here for fucking my cousin. And my other cousin got mad because she's been fucking him. But he doesn't know we've been fucking. And I went. What the fuck is going on? For real, though? And she's like, oh, yeah, for real. She's like, there's Maybe, not a lot of people on. in our town. And I went, you can't drive? See, there's a lot of shit I thought that was believable on there because of that fact, because I've seen some fucked up shit in my time and traveling and just even around Northwest Indiana, you know, there's some fucking Mm -hmm. like straight cow poke motherfuckers. Like I wouldn't die. I thought that shit was fucking for real. That's why I had to ask. It's so outrageous. It's cringe, though, because you're like, man, it's like a toss up. Yeah. there's, There's being trash or white trash, whatever you want to call it. But then there's like. Man, maybe she just shouldn't exist. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> you know, like, well, like well, they yeah. had one on there was a midget stripper, and that midget stripper gave two of our our crew pe- like because it was me, Scotty, OMG, like a couple, like a, a group of us or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say which two in the group, but they they had a stripper, a little midget stripper with the, their little arms going skiing. So they had to be naked enough and close enough to do so. So I'm tiny hands, tiny arms. <laughs> Big I tried deal. to ask logistics, but they avoided the questions. And I was like, all right, but I'm not going to ask you about your personal lives. I'm just saying I'm curious logistically yeah. how this worked out. Because her arms were really little, like really <laughs> little. And so I'm like, did you all have to kneel in front of her? 
She He's brought like, like remember those things at Great America, those robot arms where you squeeze them? <laughs> it fucking just it's like that robot hand or like the claw to grab that something. Too painful. I don't know. I feel like Crystal. that would just be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. A little bit. You know, yeah. I've seen German porns though that act like that. So like the back of a Volkswagen, you know? No. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what about Steve? You know? Did you do you get to talk to him? Did you meet him? Nothing? Mm -hmm. Nobody? That's no. fucked up. That's weird. I know. So lame. You, you know, because you always think, like, back in the day and shit, you had, say, like, this maybe a huge... I think this was before Steve, to be honest. Was it? I think so. I don't know. I don't remember. But I just, I remember being, like, blown away. Like, what the fuck? You know, proving once again, hashtag wrestling is everywhere. <laughs> I was like, there's a monkey there. I see the guy in the monkey suit kept distracting the hell out of me. I was like, why is there a guy in a monkey yeah. suit just sitting up there in the, in the wings, like freak the hell out of me. I was like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> what about the, uh, cool. but some of the, what do you think about Schlack? Have you kicked it with Schlack before? I mean, I'm sure I you probably have. I love Schlack. Schlack's my friend. He likes to punch me in the face, and then because I don't bitch afterwards, he likes me. <laughs> All right. I love Schlack. I, I love Schlack, and I love that he's kind of like, I mean, he's really like he's the poster very, boy for Deathmatch nowadays, you know? Yeah, he he's just very Schlack. You, yeah. you either love him or hate him, but if you hate him, it's just because you suck. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. I give a shout out to Schlack. Honest, I, love, I love the hell out of that, man, like. I don't know, but then I, I I do have friends that a lot of people are like those are the assholes. I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I think they're funny. So, oh yeah, for sure. Who's some other people uh, that you kind of think like in the deathmatch community that are like maybe up up and coming or like just at that spot right now where they represent the sport best. I don't know because my my viewpoint of it and I guess the general public's viewpoint of it is very different because I think of when I think of that one it's, it's two separate things the up and coming and then the, the people who are on top right now but I don't know I don't know I <laughs> a lot of people have faith in a lot of other people that I sometimes I'm like you know what I see these other kids, like, um, I'm trying to remember his name. I'm so terrible at names. Better with faces. I was just in Tennessee, and he was there. Did so good, too. We're going to have to like, come back I, I bring up, because there's, it, it, what I mean by that is, you know, back in the day, you got, you know, your guys, you know, like you, fucking, you know, Necro, Masada, fucking Younger, all these dudes. And even the guys in fucking Japan, like FMW and all that shit, that were the names, you know, representative. Like, you think, heard that name, you think instantly deathmatch. And I'm seeing, like, you know, obviously to me, you're one of those, Masada, you know, Necro. But like, even at these shows, we had people that are catching buzz, you know, whether it's because I'm seeing them on a lot of socials. They're, they're doing the fucking job. They're going all these different promotions and shit and good on them. That's what you got to do. It's same thing in music. You got to grind. If you ain't playing anywhere, you ain't getting paid, you know, fuck it. Um, but guys like redacted, you know, that was on the show and uh, Eric Dillinger uh, are guys that like the come nicest to mind. Guy ever. He's so fucking nice. He's too fucking nice. I, hate him. I just hate him so much. My sister, like me and him wrestle, and we both kill the ch shit out of each other. And guess who my sisters check on? It ain't me. It's right. fucking Dillinger every fucking time. They're like, oh, my God, is Dillinger okay? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because he's yeah. a heartthrob. He's just the nicest guy. <laughs> they said if anybody in Deathmatch Wrestling is going to heaven, it's Dillinger. Yeah, yeah probably. Him and his wife, they're you know, like good people. Love him to death. Redacted's doing really well for himself. Like I said, Remington's doing well. You also got guys like, uh, and this is, I know Ron said he talked to him. And he's been a guest on the show, and he's really good people, I think. Um, Casanova Valentine, you know, like what he's doing, like I would have loved to have had him been a part of that because, I mean, that's his special, you know, <laughs> like the no ring yeah, shit and everything. Fuck, yeah, that's like, and that shit's awesome. Like the final product when they put this shit on YouTube, that's cool. That's like some shit I'm looking mm -hmm. for, you know, like. 
that's outside the box shit. It's and it's more reality based to me. It's like it's just a fight. You call it wrestling because you know, hey, legalities, whatever. You know, you want to get some fucking promotion. I don't know, but well, I think I think when when people call it deathmatch wrestling, they're not meaning wrestling as in the technical sense. They're meaning wrestling as you know, wrestling was always about a story. Right, or right. a line to draw you in and and to make you forget about the outside world for that little bit of time so you can just escape. It was a general All by escape. side headlock. You can scream and be angry at the bad guy because they remind you of your boss and fuck that motherfucker. Or right. you can cheat in your face because they remind you of you. And, you know, that's the hope. And that's why Dusty was so over because Dusty Lock. was the common man. You know, people yeah. looked at him and said, if I, I love that song that, still. <laughs> But, He's just a common man working hard with his hands. Fuck yeah. I love the dream, man. And he would get bloody as fuck. You know, I mean, I, I, it's still I, death match to me. Like, it's a ball. Wrestling dude. Matches, they don't use weapons. And I'm like, I could point out there's traditional wrestling matches that had gimmicks or stipulations like the bull rope, the dog collar. You know, you had that. You had the cage match. The, you had the death matches. Like, you know, AEW's been utilizing Draft the match. Texas death match. Like, that's been around for fucking ever. You know, back when they weren't even really called that, it was just a death match that happened in Texas because they had some bloody-ass fucking bras down there, you know? Especially when guys like the Sheik, the original Sheik. Come on. The fuck out of here, you know? But I think it's, you know, that's the uh, evolution of death match, and death match has the fucking subgenres and shit too and it's it's cool to see and it's still relatively new you know like us 90s kids and shit were you know hip to it and that was like really just happening there remember uh my buddy jr did in high school like current events like a report on uh like big japan and fmw like japanese deathmatch wrestling i was like oh this is like back in like fucking 97 98 something like that and uh I, i was like that's so fucking cool you know like and to watch it grow and to be able to do shit where, you know, like I said, local wrestling in tech fucking Texas is killing it. You got wrestle raves doing some cool shit. And of course, yeah, I mean, circle six is coming around, you know, what Casanova's doing. There's a lot of different promotions. They're doing just, you know, death match. What's your thoughts on, uh, I mean, GCW. Cause they kind of, everybody seems to be a little half and half on them now. I, I think I understand what Brett's trying to do. Are you cool with Brett? You cool with him? I don't have any problems with him. Uh, no. I don't even He's, think about. I don't him know him else. personally. But he always seemed like a fucking weird guy to me, man. He like a he pod loves person. A lot of people the wrong way. Um, but you gotta remember, I'm a weird person too. So, so but my my weirdness comes in crude jokes and being butthole naked. Um. I think Brett was trying to, because of the angle with going towards more of a commercialized wrestling product, because of the WWE thing, you know, him with yeah, the yeah. Stuff in and, you know, I, I think that's why it changed a little bit was to still try to introduce that hardcore, but kind of not, I don't want to say water it down because it sounds terrible. I'd but, say trying but, to fill, I'd call it to be polite, filling the ECW fucking void. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're trying to do that while ma- maintaining certain guidelines. And it's hard. And I think it's, it's I mean, if yeah. that's something he wants to do, it, come hell or high water, good luck to him. Um, I, They have some great matches on GCW, I see, just like the Circle Six. And just like, and like you said before, there that's the greatest thing about all these different promotions. You don't have to just stick with, you don't. You're not cheating on them if you watch other promotions. It's not like they're going to break in and want to break up with you and destroy your shit, you know? So, I don't know. It's okay to be a fan. It's okay to watch it. I went and watched a couple of shows and had a good time. I watched the six-man that they had. I think it was a six. No, wait. Maybe 12-man? I don't remember. It was uh, GCW versus JCW, I think. I'm not sure. But with Kasai there and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arena. So I watched that match live. So that was pretty cool. Um, Book shit, you gotta fucking watch. You know, whatever. It's I know it's not Marcus and Schlack anymore. You know, fucking. Unfortunately, it's not. You know, those cocaine spots were fucking crazy. <laughs> but uh, I don't do that. <laughs> I, yeah, it's uh. 
it's just it is what it is. You know, different tastes for everybody. Speaking of different tastes, um, I mean, you got some shit coming up with uh, XPW. You gonna do sex to me? Did you like that video? If so, be sure to hit like and subscribe and check out more killer content from your boys at Juice Pro Wrestling. Whoa, yeah!